Excel, A-Level Maths, Statistics and Mechanics, Summer 2018, Question 10. A boy throws a ball at a target. At the instant when the ball leaves the boy's hand at the point A, the ball is 2 metres above horizontal ground and is moving with speed U at an angle alpha above the horizontal. In the subsequent motion, the highest point reached by the ball is 3 metres above the ground. The target is modelled as being the point T, as shown in figure 4. The ball is modelled as a particle moving freely under gravity. Using the model show that u squared equals 2g over sine squared alpha. So we're going to resolve vertically. We're going for that direction because there's quite a lot of information we can take from this. We know that u is equal to u sine alpha. A is going to equal a deceleration caused by gravity, so minus g. It's a minus because it's going in the opposite direction to the velocity. Velocity is going upwards, the acceleration is going downwards. We're going to model this up to the top of the arc. So in travelling there, it's gone from 2 metres to 3 metres. So s is equal to 1. And at the top of the arc, the velocity is 0 because that's the point where it's switching from upwards travel to downwards. So we've got u, s, a and v. We're going to use the formula v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Putting our values in, we get that 0 equals u squared sine squared alpha minus 2g. So u squared sine squared alpha equals 2g. Dividing the sine squared alpha gives us u squared equals 2g over sine squared alpha as required. The point T is at a horizontal distance of 20 metres from A and is at a height of 0.75 metres above the ground. The ball reaches T without hitting the ground. We want to find the size of the angle alpha. If we start off resolving horizontally, we're going to use the formula S equals UT because there's no acceleration in the horizontal plane. There's no air resistance in this question, for example. S is 20 metres from A to T. Our initial velocity is U cos alpha. And we're trying to find T. Rearranging that gives us T equals 20 over U cos alpha. We can now resolve vertically using our new value of T. So in this direction, U is equal to U sine alpha. S for displacement is minus 5 over 4 because the ball is going from 2 metres above ground down to 0.75 metres above ground. Acceleration is minus g, acceleration to gravity downwards, and t, as we've just calculated, is 20 over u cos alpha. We need a formula with u, s, a and t in it, which means s equals ut plus a half a t squared. Putting those values in, gives us minus 5 over 4 equals 20 u sine alpha over u cos alpha minus a half g times 20 over u cos alpha all squared. Looking at the fraction in the middle, we've got u top and bottom. They'll cancel out and we've got sine over cos, which is equal to tan. So simplifying that and squaring the brackets in the right hand fraction, gives us minus 5 over 4 equals 20 tan alpha minus a half g times 400 over u squared cos squared alpha. But we know that u squared is equal to 2g over sine squared alpha. We calculated that earlier. So substituting that in means the final fraction is a half g times 400 sine squared alpha over 2g cos squared alpha. We've got sine squared over cos squared there. That gives us tan squared. We've got a g multiplying the fraction and we've got a g on the bottom. They'll cancel out. So simplifying that, as well as multiplying our half by our 400 over 2, gives us minus 5 over 4 equals 20 tan alpha minus 100 tan squared alpha. We've got a quadratic in tan here. So if we get everything together on one side, I'm going to divide by the 5 over 4 to make everything into a whole number. So we get 80 tan squared alpha minus 16 tan alpha minus 1 equals 0. 
This factor rises to make 20 tan alpha plus 1 times 4 tan alpha minus 1 equals 0. So tan alpha is either minus 20th or positive quarter. Using the inverse tan function, we get that alpha is equal to minus 2.86 or positive 14. Looking at our diagram, alpha is a positive angle, so we take the 14. Our answer is 14 degrees. For part C, we need to state one limitation of the model that could affect your answer to part B. I've gone with there will be air resistance. That's usually the classic answer for something like this, but there are others. So for example, any spin on the ball would affect the answer. You could look at the fact that we've modeled the target as a point, whereas in real life, the target will have some size and whether the ball hits the target at the top or the bottom will affect the results. They're all valid, but as I say, I've gone with the air resistance answer. Now for part D, we need to find the time taken for the ball to travel from A to T. Using our U squared formula that we worked out earlier, we know that U is equal to the square root of 2G over sine squared alpha, which is equal to root 2G over sine alpha. If we now use this resolving horizontally, we're going to use the formula S equals UT. We know that our initial velocity horizontally is U cos alpha. Now we can replace the U with root 2G over sine alpha. Putting this in, we get S of 20 equals the U of root 2G over sine alpha all times by cos alpha times by t. Now cos over sine is 1 over tan. So 20 equals root 2g over tan alpha times by t. Rearranging to give t, we get t equals 20 tan alpha over root 2g. But from part b, we worked out that tan alpha is equal to a quarter. So replacing that, we get t equals 5 over root 2g or 1.13 if you'd like to give it as a decimal. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel or check out some more of my videos by clicking on the links here.